Um, so, welcome to Krachwerke and welcome to Does It Doom, Does It Sludge, Does It Sound Like, Does It Metal, blah, 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 blah. So, um, uh, we're going to do Blink-182. Um, Enemy of the State kind of tones because, yeah, to a lot of people, meh, you know, but the tone is amazing and they're all kind of Mesa Boogie based. Um, so, we're going to do a clean and the drive tone and uh, I managed to get both done pretty decently with um, with the triple rectifier um, I have done a wee bit of tweaking which I'll show you in a minute um, and um, what I also wanted to add before we carry on is that all these preset videos that I do now I'm gonna add the presets um, to krachwerke.com uh, to the shop where you can buy impulse responses but you can download these um, these for free these uh, amplitude presets obviously um, so you can hear what they sound like in the videos and you can find them in the shop for free so just to remind us what these things sound like um, I'm gonna play what's my age again which is the clean tone let me just so So that's a very typical clean Mesa Boogie sound. Um, it's got a slight reverb. As the intro progresses, there's a bass line underneath and it really helps to set the tone of this. And it also seems as if it might have been double tracked. So we're not gonna do all that. We're just gonna get to the basic tone. Um, but then when we get to the rhythm part, that's quite a, high gain sound, typical Mesa Boogie sound, and so is all the small things. Now, you have to be careful when mixing, um, you actually turn the drive down a bit, especially if you're double tracking and triple tracking and all that stuff. So, I'm gonna have the drive a bit higher in this, but, let me just zoom out. We will add an, a Tube Screamer to the beginning just to it, single track. It sounds a bit more like it does in, in the studio album version. That's the other thing we don't do here, which we need to remember, is that we're not messing with a hell of a lot of EQ and stuff like that after the fact. Um, so let's quickly do the clean first. So. Let me just pull up the clean one. That's this one here. Oh, if you notice, I put some EQ ahead of the whole amplitude rig, and you'll notice that I'm mimicking. Um, I've got too. I've, I've messed with my guitar, but and I put the pickups quite high. I'm not messing with them again. So I kind of dropped the bass levels a little bit um, to mimic the kind of pickups that were used. So the bass response is a little bit down, um, especially on the clean one. This is a good way if you don't have a specific pickup you can kind of find its EQ curve and you can put that EQ curve before your um, amp sim or amplitude or whatever and although it's not the best way to do it it is something that can be done. So that is the EQ curve and then we'll quickly pull up amplitude on the clean lip. So we have um, the EQ curve here extended again by the graphic equalizer. You see the lows are, are taken out. Um, because Mesa Boogies have a real low bass response, um, so you need to dial some of them out. And I like to dial out certain frequencies before they even get into the amp, then trying to EQ them, e EQ them out later. Um, we're on the clean channel, green channel, um, bass, what's that? Uh, one, two o'clock, mid one, two o'clock, treble down. Um, we don't have the push engaged um, presence quite up. Then we also have a reverb on with some pretty standard settings just to get a little bit of reverb. And here is, I think, where the trick lies is to have two amps, uh, two cabs going. The one is uh, the, the Mesa Boogie Recto um, traditional slanted. I think it's the oversized one with vintage 30s. And then in parallel, we're also miking up um, 
the Brit 800, which is the clone of the nine, Marshall 1960A cab, I think. So, and then that's that's the whole effect. So, if we play the clean part, which I'm kind of shit at, so don't laugh. See what I mean? Pretty shit at. You see how that bass builds up. Now you can treat that at the end, but um, that's partly my pickups um, being a little set a bit heavy. So you imagine that with the bass line behind it, and you get you're getting there. Is the clean piece and what we'll do is we'll go straight to the drive piece so again I've got a bit of an EQ curve there to do the same thing um, the tube scream is not engaged um, I don't have an extra EQ pedal in the front here um, we are on the second channel we are on the vintage selection, so we've got raw, uh, vintage, modern. Um, the gain is pretty high. Now this is more the sound for, um, what's that song again? What's my name again? Um, but we're gonna demo, I think, all the small things. Bass is quite down, mid just over 12, treble but down presence there. Um, I like to have the masters up quite high to kind of um, push the tubes, virtual tubes, but tubes nonetheless. So if we do things like... But we add the tube screamer. Again, we are recording straight the output of the VST, so there's going to be no messing around with what you hear right now after the fact, except getting levels to be roughly the same with the vocals. Um, so here's the thing. It didn't sound so hot because it was on the raw. Now, if we switch to the vintage... We get a bit closer. Um, I think this is quite a good patch for all purposes, even metal. So if we go to the modern... Modern is a bit hotter than the others, so let me turn that down. Let's give it some really. decide which one sounds better if it's the uh, modern or the vintage what I do know is that they both both sound great just to show you the back quickly um, again I've got the silicon diodes as the rectifier 
um, on the EL34s and um, not the kind of spongy low end uh, because <laughs> The chugging in Blink-102 especially is pretty tight, a typical kind of American high-gain pop-punk um, sound. And that is it. Thank you very much.